What do all these images that you're seeing right in front of you right now all have in common? They were all shot on the 40 millimeter lens. And Dizio Film, known for the picture zooms and the Vespid Primes, have just released their 40 millimeter lens. How's it going? Jesse here, back with another YouTube video, and today I really wanna to talk to you about a brand new lens from DZO Film, their 40 millimeter. They're famous for their picture zooms, which were great, um, and then their Vespid Primes. This is uh, a new installment in their Vespid Prime series. I've been an owner of their lenses for about a full year now, and uh, I really love the quality of those lenses. They're sharp, they're very, very well built. The focus throws are great. It's all internal, there's no like focusing. You know, the barrel doesn't push in and out. Um, it's got 80 millimeter front threads that you can get EF or PL mount. Um, and I don't actually think the quality is really good for the price that you get. So I was excited when DZO uh, reached out and wanted me to see if I wanted to make a video about their new 40 millimeter. Because 40 millimeter, as you saw from the images earlier, it's a great focal length. It's a great, uh, it's a bigger, great perspective. It's not too wide um, that, you know, you're not getting like, you know, distortion and whatnot, but it's not too tight where you feel like you're like claustrophobic. It's kind of right in the center between 35 and 50, which is a perfect sweet spot where a lot of DPs like to live. Like Roger Deakins, they really love to live in this 40 millimeter uh, range. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take a look at um, this lens compared up against very, very, very expensive cinema lenses, specifically the Cook Speed Pancro classic uh, lenses, the Cook Mini S4Is, and then the new Ingenue Optimo Primes. As you can see here by the price tags, this thing is quite a bit cheaper than some of the other options. And as you're gonna see how well it punches up well above its price range. So for context, this lens retails, I believe for 1400. I don't know, I'll put the actual price here if it, if it, if, uh, it is different than that. The Cookspeed Pancro is almost $12,000. The Cookspeed Cook, uh, Mini S4Is is I think around like 8,000, just a little bit less than that. But the Ingenue Optimo, I think over $25,000 just for that lens which is absolutely ridiculous in terms of price. So this the this is 20 times less than the Optimo and about 10 times less in price than the, than the Cookspeed Pancro. So, so let's take a look at these tests and have a look and see what we're looking at.
You really only see the, I guess, the things that make this lens cheaper when you shoot it wide open. If you, when you stop down to 2.8 and f4, as you can see with these tests here, it's pretty similar to, to the Cooks and the Optimo, especially in terms of re retaining detail. It's very, very, very sharp. It's almost no breathing at all. You'll see here that the Pancro is actually has a lot of breathing, whereas this doesn't breathe at all. Uh, so that's very similar to the Optimo in that way. I would say if there's one drawback with the Vespin Primes is their chromatic aberration, which is you can see those like those purple fringes around the edges of like really high contrast scenes. Again, this chart that we're looking at here is meant to break lenses and make, you know, designed to show off like where it's not as, you know, like where it has CA and where it has issues. So every lens is gonna show just a little bit and whatnot. And this definitely shows uh, chromatic aberration. But honestly, that's the only thing. Like the lens is built very, very well. The focus throw and the iris throws, you can see right here, it's so, so, so smooth. It's a joy to pull on. Like they, they really did a really good job with the construction here. And handling both the Cooks and the Optimos compared to this, it's around the same quality, like the quality feel in your hand. So that's a huge plus right there. Again, they're they're fast. They're, these, these are open up all the way to T2.1 and they cover full frame. What we're, we're doing these tests on my Red Komodo. We're actually shooting this on the Red Komodo. So I wasn't able to demonstrate the full frame capability of this. But yeah, these lenses also cover full frame, which is ridiculous. Not even the Master Primes cover full frame. So there's something to keep in mind there. The close focus on these lenses is really good too. Like they can go right, right up as you can see right here as you get right up into this um, our little foreground object here. It gets right up into there. So you can get like almost macro level shots with these with this lens. It's really insane. As you can see, like I think the lens color wise, it kind of leans a little bit, like it's got a neutral look. I would say it kind of leans a little bit into that like kind of slightly more magenta, slightly cooler look. So if you kind of like that old Zeiss color, I would say this is like very similar in terms of like old Zeiss color. The bokeh on this lens is really nice. It's really soft, as you can see here in kind of these out of focus elements. It's really, really, like it doesn't have those vintage like ring bokeh like you see here with the Cookspeed Pancros. With this lens, it definitely has more of a, like a Zeiss Supreme or the Airy Signature Prime look where they just went ultra, ultra, ultra soft with the out of focus elements which is really nice if you're if you're into that look. But if you're looking for kind of more of a vintage look and a little more of a softer look, you can always throw like a diffusion filter on here, like Hollywood Black Magic or Black Satin or something like that. But you're not gonna get those rings all around your bokeh though. That's something you can only get in a vintage lens. But again, those lenses are so much more expensive than this lens. And if you wanna go the contact Zeiss route or the FD route, you're not gonna get this solid housing with gears and, and hard stops and a, uh, a solid clamping front diameter. So there's like, there's always compromises here. So before I give you my final conclusion, my final thoughts, here is a little film that I made just shooting on this lens. So to kind of begin to summarize my thoughts, I think this lens 
is really, really good for the price. It's well constructed. The look is nice. It's not over the top, amazing vintage quality. Um, it's definitely sharper than some of the other options out there on the market. But if you're after something that's really clean, it's a really clean look that doesn't, that, that doesn't breathe and whatnot, and you want a really solid cinema housing where you can do focus gears and everything on that, and you don't want to spend forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, I think this lens might be for you. At least it is for me, so. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Definitely check out all the links below in the description. Huge shout out to Doffenbach Camera for allowing me to come and test their other lenses. They were super, super nice. All the people there are amazing. Please check them out, links down in the description. Hope this is really informative to you, and yeah. I haven't figured out how to end a YouTube video well, so I guess I'm just gonna end it right here.